Okay, I would like to add some uh, additional reference which we are going to see in uh, our uh, course. So I would like to start with the, the, the chapter 12 which is the vectors or here is uh, vectors and geometry of space. So this will reserve as a uh, additional resource to our uh, class. So in between uh, chapter 11 to chapter 14, there are two chapters that I think I need to give outside of the class because I think these chapters, uh, first of all, uh, I don't think we have sufficient uh, time for explanation in class, so I would like to give the, uh, the these recordings um, to have you to have um, to serve as a additional uh, tools. So uh, let us start with uh, the chapter 12 first, and you will see why this matter in the next uh, few chapters in class. Okay, so uh, since we are in calculus uh, two, then we are in the uh, multivariable calculus. Which is, by the way, we could describe the variable um, efficiently using vectors. So first, let's define the geometry of space. So let's say this is um, a 3D space system, 3D system that are um, usually we uh, we can easily describe a point in a, a three-dimension system okay and I think you should be familiar with, for this system okay, for now and another thing on the uh, geometry of space is that we are going to have uh, let me add this okay we have a uh, what we call the surface. So in 3D system, if we say um, a line equation like we did in the 2D system, it means that in the z equal 3, for example here, we have a line, if we, if we see from this from this sides, from the sides here, we see that this is line, okay, this is, this is line z equal 3, but this actually in the other part of the axis for x and y, it will go infinitely. Okay, so in three dimension system, this will serve as a surface. Similarly, if we have y equal five, this will have a line y equal five, but it serves as a surface if we if we uh, put in a three D system. Okay, so I think it should be should be okay. And then another thing is. Is this okay? Like I mentioned, this is actually a line of x equal to, but in 3D system, it's a plane, it's a surface, and this is not this is not necessarily that it is uh, having a rectangle shape. It can go further, further away. So we call that a um, infinite uh, surfaces. Okay, and then. We call this as a solid. So for example, we start from a circle. From a circle x squared plus y squared equal 1, which is a circle, circle with radius 1. And then we say that uh, we call z equal 3. So at the so, so we can make this as a two, two observable um, scenarios. So the first is we have a circle. And we have a line equations. Okay, so if we see from uh, from z y z y axis, we could see that we have <coughs> z equal three as our line, right? But if we are going to see in x y axis, so if we see from the top, if we see from the top, this will be a circle, circle x squared plus y squared equal one. If we see from this side, we see a line z equal 3 okay so so we could this uh, describe this 
three uh, D system in the in two uh, D system, each for x y axis and um, z y axis, and we could describe this line and circle. Okay, now <clears throat> another thing is if we have just saying that we have the circle x squared plus y squared equal one without any limitation on z, which means that on z it will work for all points. So this means that this will be an infinite cylinder. We say this is a cylinder uh, surfaces. And then <coughs> we could have some limitations. For example, this is uh, basically the height is limited uh, at z equal 2 and z equal 4. And you see that we have uh, a cylinder or limited cylinder. Okay? And then this will be a solid. Okay. So in 3D system, we could make the surface or solids um, easily uh, and descri describe them uh, uh, easily as well. Okay. Now next, okay. Next, another important um, point in ge in geometry of space is we are going to have the this the distance. Okay? The distance between point. So, for example, if we start from from um, from the from this P one, <coughs> and we <coughs> we are going to take into P two. Oh, I forgot. This is should be X two. Um, this will be. This is x. X one should be on that point, and this will be x one. This should be x two. Okay. So we would like to to find this distance, the red line, which we can describe in. And I think this should be you, you should be familiar as well. I hope. And very very easy, very easy to prove. Basically. This can be proven through this triangle, this triangle here, and basically this is just using the the regular Pythagorean theorem. So we have this triangle, and then we have another triangle here, which we can also prove. Okay, so we can have all the Pythagorean, and then we can write off the distance formulations. Basically, all this. Um, subtractions between the points squared and then we sum all of them and let's take the square root and basically that's our distance okay and <clears throat> from this distance from this distance we could also get the uh, the sphere the sphere here so imagine that we have a sphere with the radius r and then we have a center hkl and we have x y z as our uh, destinations so we would like to know the radius so the radius we could get as a distance and then we get when the origin is zero then we get the equation of sphere basically with the origin zero so this is a sphere with the radius r okay uh, I hope this could be uh, very describable, not really that um, difficult. Okay. Next thing, okay, aside from geometry of space, about surface, solids, um, of, of course we are going to, to take some principle on vectors. And since you have done some courses um, using vectors, especially in physics and maybe in some mathematics as well. Uh, We'll just give you some overview and what we are expecting and what should be which what should you um, maybe aware be aware of okay so let me start with the vectors let me write here vectors and let me just go into this three lines with the so we have a b so we have a direction a b let's say we have a vector a b over there we have vector 
uh, BC and we have factor AC and F. Of course, from the uh, principality of factors, uh, it, it is actually just like how to find your way, okay? how to find the way. So suppose that we have A and we would like to move until C. So the way we can go through is, of course, this is easy this way, but we can also get this from A to B and then to C. We have the same endpoints and, and that is how we connect these vectors that AC is actually that, okay? And if, for the addition of vectors, we could then, this is what we call the triangle law. Another law that is quite important is we can perhaps uh, use the parallelogram law. This is something that is not to be taken as a, um, you need to memorize everything, but when you have vectors, when you have vectors, the vector itself, you can manipulate, which means that this vector, let's say we have vector u and v. You can pick u and v in any positions you want, as long as the value and the direction still the same. Okay, for example, I would like to take this v over here. Let's say this is V, and I would like to know that uh, uh, we could also rewrite the U plus V, and I will take another U, this is another U, this is, notice that I will, um, I will write all the vectors using the arrow uh, above the characters, although in the textbook you may see, you may have seen the vectors is just like a letters like this, bold uh, characters. But since I, I will find it difficult to to wrote a bold letters compared to the letter with arrow, so I will choose the letter with arrow to, to describe vectors, okay, in, in my course, okay. So we could also describe this U plus V in terms of the screen line, okay. So we could describe uh, vectors, uh, in any positions, that's a principality of, of factors. <clears throat> and then what else do we have is we could also multiply the vectors with scalar. So we can have like a many, many, uh, so we can multiply, make it twice, make it smaller, make it in different directions, opposite direction as well. Uh, multiply with the negative, uh, that's how we, we can um, play with our vectors, okay? Okay, next is, uh, oh wait, wrong. Next is the subtractions. So subtractions basically is the same thing as the addition, but the difference is we need to multiply one of the vectors with the negative. For example, we have this UV, Okay, and we can remember we can play with the vectors. We can um, uh, uh, put in any positions, and then if we want to know what is u minus v, then we need to describe what is minus v. Minus v is as simple as we take this and then we take in opposite direction. This is minus v. As we can see from here, then we could describe u minus v in terms of this directions. Or, if you would like to, to, to write off, we could also write something like this. This is also the same, okay, with the same um, u and v. This is a set of simplifications. But basically, the way it works is we are going to multiply one of the vectors with a negative, and then we are going to combine this two. The same thing with our addition of factors, okay? And what else uh, for the starters is, I think this one, 
this is we call the component of vectors. Suppose that this is a vector A, we can write in two dimension, we can write A1, A2 with this um, brackets, or we could write A1, A2, A3 for 3D since for three dimension system. Um, and again, this brackets is a special brackets for uh, vectors. Okay, so we call this as a component of vectors. A component of vectors. So, um, okay. <clears throat> Another thing is the the length of the vectors itself. This is defined by the magnitude value of the component vectors. So we can write here as this. Okay. This is just um, additional additional components, and this is how we actually write the length or the magnitude value of uh, vectors. So basically. We could we could take the square root of the a1 squared plus a2 squared, and if this 3D system, we add plus a3 squared, okay, and basically that is the length of the vectors. Okay, that's I think. Um, do we have something else? And I think the rest of the. The rest of it will be about. Let me add in a new page. Is is if we have this? Okay, this is the same as before, but we can describe in terms of geometric, which we can simply uh, plus all the components for for both vectors. So a one plus b one, a two plus b two, and if we have uh, a three, we could also add a three plus b three, uh, and uh, and. And, and I think if you see these 2D uh, vectors, we could see clearly that we have uh, described the vectors in geometric shape. So we have the, this, uh, the differences, A2, A1, okay, this is A2, B1, B2. And we could see the, all the um, analytical uh, perspective from the geometry, okay? And I think it's not really that much here. Um, and, and the other one also about property of factors. This is uh, will be uh, applied for vectors. Okay. If you want to take notes, you can post the video and take notes. Okay. And then we can describe the vectors in terms of i, j, k. So basically, i, j, k is, uh, is a component of vectors that we start taking this for each one of the axes. Okay. So by doing this, and usually we have this marks. By doing this, we could describe a vectors into the I, J, K um, equation. So for example, if we have the vectors A, which is the described as this three component of vectors, then we could also describe this vector as A1 uh, I plus A2 J plus A3 uh, K. Okay, as simple as that. So, um, what should be done next? Oh, the other thing is the actually that will be for the next part. I think should be okay for now. So this is the first part of the vectors, the geometry of space, just as a simple introduction, an overview for um for the vectors okay. so hopefully you can uh, have some sort of uh, good understanding in, in vectors okay
Okay, now <coughs> we move on to so what we call the, the dot product. So dot product, is by definition, if we have two vectors A and B, and if we say the dot product, we say the A and then we uh, give the, the, the dot and then B, this means that we are going to sum all of the component of A1, B1, plus A2, B2, plus A3, B3. So this is what we call the dot product. There are several properties within the dot product, as you can see from this part, which you can uh, basically say that the uh, basically the, the results of the dot product, this result is scalar. And this is important. Okay. And then, <coughs> if we imagine that there are uh, two vectors a and b, and then we uh, we say that there are an angle in between these two vectors, then we could we could um, we could have this relations, which is the a dot b equals uh, magnitude a multiplied magnitude b cosine theta. Okay, let's continue. So uh, we can determine the the the, the angle between these uh, two vectors by taking actually the law of cosines. So we take the law of cosine, which we can see from um, this triangle. We could write down the value of a b or the distance AB equal distance OA and OB. Okay, this that's distance. Okay. And then minus two OA OB and then cosine theta. And by taking this uh, this law of cosine, we could see that Basically, I hope you can you can solve this. So you will see that at the end of the day, we could see that this will resulting in. Uh, so if the O A is A like that, and if this is B, and A B is distance A minus B. Then we can write this as a dot b equal magnitude a magnitude b cosine theta. Okay, so from this law of cosine, we can get these uh, formulations, which we are quite useful. And then from these formulations, we could develop uh, just as simply we just replace and cross multiply. And we can write as this, and of course, if the a um, the angle, okay, if the angle is zero, or if the if the component of the cosine is zero, which means the angle should be pi over two, which means the vector should be orthogonal, okay, or or uh, yeah, orthogonal. Okay, or, or perpendicular. That's um, so this orthogonal or perpendicular. Okay. And then another thing is the okay, this that's the theorem. The other important on this um, dot product is we can have the scalar projections. Okay. So suppose that we have this all categories. So we, we say that this um, scalar projections, let, let's start from the scalar projections. So scalar projections is just a um, projecting the vectors, for example this B, we project to 
this uh, segment line of PS. Okay, uh, and, and we can write the magnitude B cosine theta equal, that's the, uh, the PS, ba basically th this is just a, a regular um, component vectors in physics. If you remember, you have a force and then you have the sine component and cosine component. This is the cosine component. So this is a projections uh, by scalar. And you can also have the vector projections, which is very similar, but the projection is not just value, but it is actually a vector. So the difference is, is basically, so all looking similar, but the, the so, so here, maybe let me write here, the, uh, this is B cosine theta, okay. Or let me write here. It should be here, B cosine theta. And basically, the vector is the same scalar projections multiply with the vectors. Okay, this is the vectors. Okay. Basically, the unit vectors. Okay. I think I haven't told you about the unit vector, but actually unit vector of a component is a, uh, a vector that has a value of one, okay, a value of one. Which we describe the unit vector as a let's say a this is unit vector okay the vector itself divide with the uh, mag its magnitude okay i think that's the make it bigger the projections uh, what do we have uh -huh. Okay, now the next part of the vectors is the cross product. Okay. Now the cross product is basically uh, how to find a non-zero vector that is perpendicular to let's say two vectors let's say we have a and b so let's let's suppose that the the vectors that is perpendicular is this c okay. so the cross product is actually um, this result c for the uh, two vectors a b okay so the c will be perpendicular to a and also perpendicular to b so what does it mean is that if we take the component for a and we take component for b so because they are both perpendicular to c then a dot c will be zero and b dot c will be also zero. So we are going to have first equation is we have a1 c1 plus a2 c2 plus 
a3 c3 equals 0 and the same way we have b1 c1 plus okay we write everything here and we subtract okay, we subtract and we want to eliminate okay we want to eliminate this part here so how to eliminate we are going to multiply all with b3 with the for the first equation and a3 for the second equation okay so this is, means uh, i will multiply and then i will subtract so i will get lost this and I will factorize C1. So I will have A1 B3 minus A3 B1. Okay. And then plus C2, I will uh, factorize A2 B3 minus A3 B2. Okay. Now this will be equal to zero. So we have the C1 and C2, which we can find the solution for this uh, C1 and C2. So for obvious reason, because this is a system of linear equations, so I will have my solutions as C1 is that A2, B3, minus a3 b2 and our c2 is a1 b3 minus a3 b1 right oh this should be should be minus Oh, this should be uh, switch over. So this will be a three b one minus a one b three. This is okay because of so p so for p c p c one plus q c two equals zero c1 is q c2 is minus b okay the solutions right okay now this let's substitute this two values c1 and c2 substitute to back to the equations on this two okay so let's substitute and then we get the result I will just write directly you, you can check with p1 a1 b2 minus a2 b1 now we could have all the C so C1 C2 C3 and write as A2 B3 minus A3 B2 A3 B1 minus A1 B3 and lastly okay so nicely done and this is what we call as A cross B okay so by definitions by definitions we start off by definitions okay definition of cross product okay and perhaps this is something that is not necessarily ideal to understand if you just look at the forms then perhaps uh, it's better to 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 let the 
uh, matrix form um, take into our computations so suppose that we have determinant in matrix this is equal AD minus BC right so simply we multiply the diagonal okay, and then we subtract this diagonal now if we have A1 A2 A3 B1 B2 B3 C1 C2 C3 now if we do the if we do the determinant of the 3 by 3 and focus that if we take the first row okay, if we take the first row as our uh, reference then this will be A1 multiply with the determinant of B2 B3 C2 C3 okay. and then the second one will be minus in matrix this is called the uh, determinant 3 by 3 uh, using the cofactor coefficient method, method. Okay. this is B1, C1, B3, C3 and then this is plus A3 B1, B2, C1, C2 and how to get all of this is basically look at the A1 first column first row we are left with this right which is perfectly this is determined here okay now let's do the same thing let's do the same thing with the second one this is a a2 right so this will be this pr practically that the left one right b1 c1 uh, b3 c3 right okay but what you need to be aware of is the patterns this should be positive negative positive negative positive negative positive negative positive this is what we call it the, the cofactor method so that's why we have negative here okay now this will be equal okay this will be equal if we take another row for for instance this is b1 let's say a2 a3 c2 c3 this is negative plus b2 a1 a3 c1 c3 negative again a1 a2 c1 c2 and you can also take this the third row using c1 same thing this will be a2 a3 b2 b3 negative c2 A1, B1, A3, B3, and plus C3, A1, B, B1, A2, B2. All will have the same same results. Okay. All will have the same results. always have the same results I think this is not clear remove a little bit to the left okay all right okay another uh, point on how to write this um, cross product uh, immediately is since we are going to have a two vectors two vectors for example um, 
a is and b is this so a cross b we can write using the first row will be i j k this is served as this this uh, a1 a2 a3 this one and that one okay so we can write and then simply we write all the a all the b and basically using the same um, method we could write off the, the cross product easily okay another method which I think I prefer this method compared to the uh, regular method is we write adding i j and write again the same two columns okay and then I will start this one multiply so I will take the 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 the, the product or the summations of all these components so this will be a2 b3 i plus a3 b1 j plus a1 b2 k and then I will minus this blue line so this will be minus and all the subtraction uh, uh, additions let me resize this to make it clear so this will be a 2 b 1 k plus a 3 b 2 i plus a 1 b 3 And then I will I will add all the components so I will be a2 b3 minus so this is I right okay. that's I3 a3 B2 and plus J or maybe you need to write the vectors first and then the I and J so for J is A3 B1 minus A1 B3 and then plus for K A1 B2 minus a to b1 okay, we can write this for a cross b and this is the same thing right same thing see the, all the components they are actually the same right the same thing okay okay so hopefully it is clear Okay, now the next part is, let me add some properties of the cross product. So the A cross B will be orthogonal to A and B. Okay, that's the idea. Now the orthogonal. So hopefully now it's clear. Okay, I I take a new recordings now because I believe in the previous screen there are some uh, some screen that is not in a full paper. Okay. And then another thing is we we are going to take this right hand rule to give you the directions of the cross product okay. so suppose that this is a so it means that this is a and this is b so 
So here, if we rotate from here to get to there, okay, it's going up. Okay. So we have the using the the, the thumbs as the direction for the uh, A cross B. And another um, property is the angle. So the angle in between A, B, we can also take the cross product A cross B. So this could be done by, first of all, we take the, we take the magnitude of the cross product and we take the squared. So basically we are taking all the components squared So we take the, uh, the magnitude values. Okay. Now this will be A2 uh, squared, B2, B3 squared, and then minus we have two a two a three b two b three plus a three squared b two squared and we have uh, quite long so bear with me let's start this it's also negative. And then one more. Okay, another one. Okay, we're done. And basically, we are going to factorize this using uh, some special factorizations using the uh, three components. I will just write the, the result here. Okay, basically that and then minus the squared for all this summation. Squared, okay. And simply this is what we call as the magnitude A, magnitude B squared minus, this is going to be the, the dot product, A dot B squared. And we can have the dot product as cosine squared theta, right? And we can factorize the a squared, b squared, and simply this is my one minus cosine squared theta, which is the sine. That's how we get the sine. And we take this square root on the theta between 0 to pi. We take the sine squared theta equal to sine theta. Okay. So we can write as the a cross b is equal a magnitude a magnitude b sine theta. And of course, the A um, and B parallels when theta is zero, which means the cross 
will be zero. Okay. Okay, a last few things. Just um, additional. Um, the cross product can also be written by taking the length of the cross product. So cross product is basically is this, right? Now if you remember, the B sine theta is the component, a scalar component of B, right? So basically, the length of the cross product, this is equal to area of parallelogram determined by factor A and factor B, okay? All right, um, what else? Oh, the cross product resulting in vectors, okay, cross product resulting in vectors. So, if you remember if we have the ijk, so based on some combinations, variations, we can have this result. And basically how we get this is through the, uh, our, our rules of thumbs, or the uh, right hand rules, right? So, by taking this, okay, so this is the thumbs, this is the finger, um, index finger. So this is cross the my palm. Okay, so cross here, so this is where we get the thumbs. So we, we could start taking this small like this. Let's, let's, let's say this is I, J, let's say K. So if we say I cross J, going over there, okay, and based on our rules of time, Thumb. Uh, I believe that is. No, I think this should be. Let me write more clear. So if I cross J, so I. I cross J, so it's going to be downside. So let's say we have here is K. And if we take the J cross I, now it's going up. Okay. Well, it's, it's a little bit weird uh, since I have the negative case here, but as long as you follow the right hand rules, uh, you should be able to see the all the connections between all these uh, uh, directions for the factors. Okay. okay. S and I think one more thing, just to, f to end uh, the property, I think you can see the property. It works for most of the part, but since the cross product is a vector, it means that you need to uh, to um, to apply, or the property will be the same with the with the uh, with the the result will be the same with the, with the uh, vectors as as we can see from um, what we have been through. Uh, lastly, is we can also calculate the volume of the what we call 
as a, a triple products, okay? Or we, this is what we call the parallel pipe. Okay, so basically, the parallel pipe, the volume is taken from the area, okay, multiplied with the height, right? Notice that the height is this H here, right? It's as in the picture. And then knowing that the, the area is basically the parallelogram, which we define as the cross product in, in the previous page, right? So this will be B cross C. And the H, the height, which is the projections of A. Scalar projections of A, which we can through uh, write down that this will be A cosine theta, or we could write this part here. We could write as a dot, right, and then we can remove the cosine theta. As in the, in the dot product, we have, so we can exchange this, become a dot b. So the same thing with this, we can take in the a dot the b cross c. Okay, so that's, that's how we could also find the volume of parallel pipe by uh, uh, taking the the cross product as a area of parallelogram and then we um, convert into the dot product, okay? I think this should be, should be dot with that, okay? To avoid a mistake. So done, and I think that's the second part for now. See you on the third part.